Let's face it, building no-code apps can be confusing with all the available tools out there today. That's why in today's video, I will be covering the perfect no-code app stack that you need to know, especially if you want to leverage AI in your apps as well. After watching this video, you will know exactly which tools you need and how to put everything together in order to build your dream app. Now, this video is going to be divided into two parts. In the first part, I will be sharing with you the perfect no-code stack if you are looking to build a regular no-code app. And then the second part of the video, I will be covering the perfect no-code stack if you are looking to leverage AI as well. It's also important to mention that all the tools that I'm going to be mentioning in today's video are either completely free or have very, very generous free plans. And this allows you to get started right away without looking for your wallet. Now, before we get started, as always, all the apps and all the resources that I'm going to be talking about in today's video, you can get more information about them, including their best use cases from my Patreon page. And you can learn more about it via the link in the description below the video. Now, the first tool that you need to select when building your no-code app is a no-code app builder. A no-code app builder provides you with two things. It provides a UI for your users to interact with, and it also gives you an ability to build logic flows, which is the way that your app behaves in response to the way it's interacting with the user. Now, there are tons and tons of different no-code app builders out there, but the main ones are Flutterflow, Bubble, and Adalo, depending on what kind of app you're going to be building. Now, I can definitely recommend Flutterflow for pretty much any kind of app that you may want to build, anything starting from a very, very simple app to something that's going to be very, very complex. I've been using Flutterflow for a while now, and you can certainly build all kinds of apps with it. And no, I'm not getting paid by Flutterflow to say any of this. Next, you need to select your backend data storage service. And this is in order to be able to store your app's data permanently. Now, here again, you have tons and tons of different services that you can use, but I would recommend starting off with either Firebase or Superbase, which are two of the more common backend storage services. The main difference between Firebase and Superbase is in the way they store data. Firebase is a NoSQL database, which means that you're essentially creating collections instead of tables with built-in relationships. Where on the other hand, Superbase is your traditional relationship style database backend. And this is where you're going to be creating tables and views as well as modeling the relationships between different tables in order to be able to pull the data that you need if it's stored in multiple tables. Now, if you're building a more complex app, you can certainly look into Xano, which is a beefier storage service provider that allows you to create different entities where you're going to be storing your data. Plus, it provides other benefits such as APIs and other things as well. Now, if your app doesn't have any super unique requirements, then I recommend that you just start with Firebase and then you can use a tool such as Rowi in order to manage your data that you have inside of Firebase. And this is going to make it easier to do things like importing your data, exporting your data. Plus, as an added benefit, you can also implement a logic flows right inside of Rowi. And this means you can implement various flows right at the database level without needing to worry about doing them in your no code app builder. And so at this point, your no code stack might look something like this. So we have the user, they're interacting with a no code tool such as Flutterflow, perhaps. And this tool provides a UI, provides the logic, and it communicates with a separate backend storage provider such as Firebase or Superbase. And optionally, you might be using Rowi as your data manager 
to help you manage the data that you have in your backend. Now, this type of app stack is perfect for relatively simple apps. But on the other hand, if you are looking to build something more involved, something more complex where your app is going to be doing some kind of more complex calculation. You might have multiple logic flows. You might have background processes, things like that. Then you need to employ an integration service. An integration service allows you to do all kinds of interesting logic flows without bogging down your no code app builder. Plus, you can also build background tasks very very easily and these tasks will execute in the background meaning that while the user is not directly interacting with your app now when it comes to integration tools you have lots and lots of options at your disposal but the two main ones that i can recommend is n8n that you're seeing here or make.com Come. Now, these tools are fairly similar. The main difference between N8N and Make.com is that N8N is open source. So if you can host it yourself, you can essentially use this tool absolutely free. While on the other hand, Make.com is a commercial tool. They do have a generous free plan. But if you're building an app that's going to be making lots and lots of integration calls, you will probably have to jump on one of the paid plans instead. Now, as the result of implementing an integration tool, your no code app stack is going to look something like this. You're going to have your integration tool right here, and it's going to either communicate with your no code tool using its API, or it's going to talk directly to the backend storage and do all the logic flows in addition to the logic flows that you might be doing directly in your no code tool now remember i said n8n is an open source tool but there is a catch with all open source tools you need to host them yourself and this is a nice trade-off because if you can figure out how to host it you get all of its functionality and features for absolutely free now the service that i highly recommend for hosting just about any open source tool out there is railway and it's available at railway.app it's a great service and i use it for hosting various tools that I use all the time. And here's the updated app stack diagram showing how Railway is gonna be hosting your open source integration tool if that's what you decide to use. Now, at this point, you have the perfect no-code app stack to build any kind of app that you choose. Now, let's say you wanna build a no-code app, but this time you also want to leverage AI. Now, there are all kinds of AI apps that you can build, but in this video, I want to focus on LLMs, which are large language models. And by leveraging LLMs, you can build an app that will generate some piece of text, whether that's creating a summary of something, answer questions, or offer simple completions for your prompts. Now, the first thing that you need to do when it comes to building an AI-powered no-code app is you need to choose a model. And here you have lots of options available as well. For instance, you have your LLMs from OpenAI, and these are your chat GPT and GPT variants. Or if you want to try out another model, perhaps an open source LLM, you can head over to huggingface.co and check out their open LLM leaderboard. And here you have a list of all kinds of open source LLMs that you can leverage in your no code ai app but for the purpose of our ai app stack we're going to be focusing exclusively on open ai's llms more specifically chat gpt now once you decide on a particular llm you need to connect this llm to your main app and here you have two ways of doing so. The simplest way is to just connect the LLM to your app via an API that the LLM exposes. The second way is to connect your LLM to your app via a specific integration module that supports this particular LLM. 
For instance, if you want to connect a GPT or chat GPT to your no code app, you can simply head over to OpenAI's platform documentation and you can learn more about their API interface that allows you to easily connect your app to it. Now, if you're building a more complex app and you're using one of these integration tools that I talked about, then it would make more sense to connect to your LLM directly from one of these flows that you've built in your integration tools. And either of these integration tools, whether it's N8N or make.com, make it super easy to connect directly to your LLM right from one of the existing flows that you've defined here. And so once you've decided to leverage AI and, and added an LLM to your overall no code app stack, this is what the architecture is going to look like. You're going to have your LLM here and you're going to be talking to your LLM either via an API from your no code tool, or you might have a module inside of one of these flows defined in your integration tool connect to the LLM instead. Now, while LLMs are very, very powerful and can do some amazing things, a lot of people do not leverage the full power of LLMs because they simply do not know what LLMs are fully capable of doing. And that is why if you're going to be relying on an LLM in a fairly complex app, you want to be using something like Langchain. And what exactly is Langchain? Well, Langchain is a framework for developing applications powered by language models. And here's a simple diagram of some of the things that Langchain helps you when it comes to interacting with LLMs. So, can, so it can help you by tying various components together, such as work with different models, chain different components, configure your prompts the right way handle your indexes memory as well as interact with all kinds of interesting agents and here's a really really powerful tool called flowwise ai that allows you to more easily interact with Langchain and set up all kinds of interesting flows. And so here's just a handful of examples of some of the things that you can do by leveraging the power of Langchain when it comes to interacting with an LLM. And here's the updated app stack diagram showing you exactly where Langchain fits in so that you can see how Langchain is going to be interacting with your LLM to make your LLM a lot more powerful and to be able to use your LLM to its full potential. Now, Langchain and Flowwise are great tools, but if you're looking for something just a tad simpler, that's going to be easier to use and it's going to help you to automate the way that you're dealing with an LLM. Maybe you want to send 100 requests to chat GPT and get 100 responses very, very quickly. In that case, I recommend you check out Dust tt which is a lang chain type tool that allows you to build flows where you are able to automate how you are interacting with an llm so here i have a very very simple flow i have some input data i have examples and i have a prompt that is going to be talking to gpt4 and then I have a quick code example. And when everything is said and done, I have 99 results that were processed in one batch without having to execute one at a time. And so this is an excellent tool. If you're looking to build a lang chain type flows and you're looking to automate your requests, so instead of creating one request, you wanna just create a hundred requests and get a hundred responses back. Now, regardless how you're actually gonna be accessing this LLM, whether it's directly via your no code tools API, via an integration tool or with the help of Langchain. One of the main drawbacks of modern day LLMs is that they have relatively short memory and they do not have access to data 
unless they've been trained with that data. And so if you are looking to work with an LLM, but you're looking to extend it either by giving it data that it should know about or by changing its behavior so that it spits out different responses as compared to the responses that it was originally designed to emit, you have two options at your disposal. The first is that you can provide additional data to your LLM via embeddings. And in that case, you have to use a third party storage service that's especially made for embeddings. And one example is Pinecone, which is a tool that I covered multiple times on this channel. This is a great, great service for encoding and storing additional data that you can make available to your LLM. Now, on the other hand, if you are looking to change the actual behavior of the model, meaning that you want your model to give you different responses as compared to how it's doing right now, you're not looking to give it data that you want the model to know. Well, in that case, you need to fine tune an existing model by giving it examples with inputs and preferred outputs and that's going to change the way that the model behaves and a really good tool to do that is monster api and this tool allows you to do all kinds of interesting things with llm so you can fine tune it you can train them and you can deploy them as well and have access to your new fine-tuned model via an api and now if you take into account the fact that you can add new data via embeddings or change the behavior of your model via fine tuning, this is what your app stack is going to look like. So we have this embedding database here. And if you're going to be using something like Lang Chain, that is going to be responsible for connecting to the embedding database and getting back the results. On the other hand, if you decide to fine tune an existing model, then you're essentially going to be creating another version of your original model. And so we have this original model here and your fine tune model will be here and you'll be able to work with your new fine tune model exactly the same way that you were able to work with the original model except now this fine-tuned model will be behaving differently and is going to be giving you a different responses as a result of you having to train it and so bringing it all together this is the final result of the perfect no code ai stack we have the user here that's going to be interacting with your no code tool the no code tool provides the ui the logic as well as the api here you have a separate backend storage that can be managed by a tool such as roe for more complex apps, you might be using an integration tool such as N8N or make.com. And if you're going to be using an open source tool, you may want to host it on a service such as Railway. Now, if you decide to leverage AI in your apps, you need to pick the right LLM, which is a large language model. And for best results, you might want to connect it to a link chain and you can create all kinds of interesting lang chain flows using flowwise ai or for simple use cases you can use a tool such as dust.tt now if you want to provide additional knowledge to your llm you're going to be doing that with embeddings and your lang chain framework here is going to be connecting to embeddings to save embeddings or to retrieve embeddings and it's going to make them available to your llm and last but not least, if you are looking to change how your LLM behaves, meaning that you want your LLM to provide different responses to certain input, then you will need to fine tune your LLM. And you can do so with the help of all kinds of different tools and services. One of the most popular being Monster API. And as a result, you're now looking at the perfect no code AI stack that's going to enable you to quickly and easily build the no-code app of your dreams 
quickly and easily. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video and you're looking to build a no code app, regardless whether it's going to be leveraging AI or not, you definitely want to check out our amazing Patreon community because once you join our amazing Patreon community, you're going to get access to all the no code apps that I built on this channel. They're all there, which means you can easily view and or clone them. Plus, you're going to get access to extra content such as Q&As, live streams, behind the scenes content and our Patreon supported masterclass series where I do deep dives on specific topics that the community votes on. And above all, when you join our amazing Patreon community, you are gonna be supporting this channel and supporting my work, and that is highly, highly appreciated. And so if you're serious about your no-code development, you wanna build awesome apps, you wanna build apps that actually make a difference, then you owe it to yourself to check out our amazing Patreon community and consider becoming a member.